Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel All About VLSI. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the basic transfers in EHB protocol, like how we are going to perform a transfer, like if it may be a write transfer or it may be a retransfer. So how we are going to uh, do that? Okay, so that is what we are going to see in this video. Uh, you know, this is the part two of the EHB protocol series, where in the part one we have an introduction to AHB protocol, we have seen what do you mean by AHB protocol, how, uh, what are the signals which are associated with the master and what are the signals which are associated with the slave. So this and all things we have seen in the part one. So if you have missed the part one, please go revisit the part one, which is available in our channel's playlist. Okay. Yes. So now let us try to discuss about the basic transfers in AHB protocol. So basically a transfer consists of two phases. So in AHB protocol, it may be a write transfer or it may be a retransfer. For example, let us consider a write transfer. So let us consider a write transfer like this. Now in this write transfer, uh, let us assume our H write is equal to 1. So in the write transfer, our H write value will be equal to 1. That is we are having a master and a slave like this. So we are having a master and a slave. So the data transfer will be from master to slave. Okay. Now here we need to send a packet. Okay. So it may, it is a data packet which we are sending from master to slave. Now this is a write transfer. Now uh, for this write transfer to happen. So this write transfer will be happening in basically two clock cycles or it may be extended for more than two clock cycles. But ideal case we are uh, considering two clock cycles. Okay. There may be scenarios where the transfer will be extended beyond two clock cycles also that scenario so we will discuss later but for now any transfer to happen it may be a write transfer or it may be a read transfer it will take minimum two cycles it will take minimum of two cycles and how the number of cycles will be decided how the number of cycles will be increased that and all things we are going to learn in our further sessions okay now so it is going to happen in two cycles okay or so here in the case of HB transfer, each cycle is having, basically this transfer is happening in two phases or two cycles, okay. So basically in first cycle, basically in first cycle, this first cycle is known as address phase. And the second cycle is known as data phase. So any transfer to happen, it may be a write transfer or it may be a read transfer. So basically, uh, it is going to take two cycles. Okay, first cycle is basically your address phase, and second cycle is basically your data phase. Okay, so basically, in the case of address phase, uh, it is going to last. Uh, it is going to last for a single H clock cycle unless it is extended by the previous bus transfer. Okay, uh, this is the secondary case that we are going to learn. For now, we are assuming that address phase is only consuming only one cycle and data phase is also consuming only one cycle okay so uh, one plus one that is address phase and data phase so total two cycles in two cycles write transfer or retransfer is happening okay we are going to discuss the another cases in later now so let us try to understand this address phase and data phase uh, in this retransfer now uh, in the case of retransfer our h write is equal to zero in the case of retransfer our h write is equal to zero that means uh, the master is reading the data from the slave this is our master and this is our slave and the data direction is from slave to master. This is the data direction. Uh, the data is transferring from the slave to master. Now, so as I have said, for any data to be read or any data to be written, okay, or any data or any transfer to be completed, we need two cycles. That is two phases. It is going to happen uh, in two phases. One is address phase and another is data phase. Now, what do you mean by address phase? So basically this address phase, now what do you mean by this address phase? So I will write down here. So basically in address phase, all the control signals should be valid and address of first packet is provided okay 
and valid address. So what is it? So in the in the case of address space, all the control signals should be valid. So what are all the control signals which we have in HB protocol that we have seen in our uh, earlier session? So the control signals are. Let me show you. So the control signals which we have are uh, H ready. H ready is given by the slave itself. Uh, the control signals are H address, H write, H size, H burst, H p dot, H trans, H mask lock. Okay. So these are all the control signals. So address and the control signals. So this should be valid in your address phase. When the master is starting a address phase, then all these controls signals should have some valid value. Okay. So this all the control signals should have some valid value, and the valid address of the first packet is provided in the case of address phase. And in the case of data phase, as the name suggests, uh, in the case of data phase, the master it is going to provide the data, uh, required data. Or in if it is a read transfer, it is going to read the data. If it is a write transfer, it is going to provide the data in the data phase. And if it is a, and if it is a read transfer, the master it is going to read the data. Okay. So in the case of, I will write down here. So in the case of data phase, read or write the data. So this is how. Uh, depending upon the type of phase which we are dealing with, whether to transfer the address or whether to trans or whether to transfer the data is being decided. Okay. Now here there is one more point to be discussed. This is a very important point. Now previously we have discussed that the address uh, is provided by the master to decide which slave should it select. Okay. So previously what we have studied is the master it is going to provide the address. So that it can select a uh, corresponding slave that we have already discussed. Now that was the first role of our address. Okay. Now there is one more role for this address signal. What is the second role? I have told you. I will tell this. So the second role of this address signal is in the case of HB protocol, every data item which we are going to send, every data which we are going to send or read, which we are going to write or read, which we are. going to write or read is associated with an address is associated with an address so this is a very very important point so if it is a write transfer so the data which we are sending from the master to slave will be associated with an particular address or if it is a read transfer so the data which the master reading from the slave will be associated with a address for example if we have a master and a slave like this let's say master is performing a write operation let's say master is performing a write operation that is the data is being sent from master to slave now let's say if the master is sending four data items let's say if the master is sending four data items that is like this it is sending four data packets to the slave Basically, this is a burst operation. Everything we are going to uh, discuss it in further sessions. But for now, let us take a simple glance. So, here the master is sending four data packets. Okay. So the master it is not going to send the data packets as it is. So every data packet will be associated with an address. So the first data packet will be associated with address let's say A1, and second data packet will be associated with address A2. And third data packet will be associated with some address, and fourth data packet will be associated with some address. So in this AHB protocol, every data item which the master is going to send to the slave, or which the master it is going to read from the slave, so every data packet is associated with some corresponding addresses. Okay. So how to how it is calculating that address, how that address, what is that address, what is the relationship between the present address and the previous address, those and all things we are going to learn in our for the sessions for now what is the point which is to be remembered is every data item which the master it is going to send it to the slave or which the master it is going to read from the slave is associated with an address okay now so this we have discussed it now so in the case of read transfer let us try to analyze how the read transfer is happening so this is basically the first cycle so this is uh, the first cycle which we are having and this is the second cycle okay here we are going to analyze only two cycles so in the first cycle if you observe this is the address phase i have told you right 
So any transfer to happen, we are going to consider two cycles. One is address phase and another is data phase. So any transfer to be happening, we are going to consider two phases. One is address phase and another is data phase. So what is happening in, in the address phase, as I have told you previously, in the case of in the case of address phase, the master it is going to provide all the valid control signals like hwrite. It should not provide hwrite as an unknown signal, or it should not provide h uh, it should not provide hwtrans as an unknown signal. Okay, so those values sh should be valid. Okay, so in the case of address phase, it is maintaining a valid value. Okay, so if you can see this hwrite value is zero. So this is zero. So hwrite value is zero. Previously, it was unknown. Previously, it was unknown, and in the case of address phase, the hwrite value was made to zero. We can see this. So I will write down here: master should provide valid control signal. In this example, we are taking only single control signal that is hwrite for now. Okay. So we are taking a hwrite. Uh, we are only taking a one valid control signal that is hwrite. Okay. We will discuss about other control signals later. So we can see, let's say we are sending one packet item or let's say we are reading one packet item. So as I have told you in the previous slide itself, so every packet will be associated with some address. So if I want to read this packet, if I want to read a packet from the slave, I should provide an address which is associated with that packet. Okay. So that's why what I'm doing in the case of address phase, I am providing an address. In the case of address space, I am providing an address so that I can read the packet which is associated with this address. Okay. So once again, I am repeating this point. Address has two roles. First role is to select which slave the master it wants to communicate with. And second role is to uh, combine or associate uh, with the packet. Okay. So in the case of write transfer, the master it is going to provide the address corresponding to each and every data item. In the case of read transfer, the master is going to provide the address uh, corresponding to the data which it wants to read. Okay, so it is providing the address in the case of address space. Now, in the case of address space, we are not going to get any data. Okay, this is also important one which I have already discussed in our previous slide. So in the case of address space, I'm not going to get any data. Okay, in the case of address space, I'm not getting any data. I am just providing my address and control signal. Okay. So in the next phase, that is in the data phase, leave about this. Okay. Just leave about this for now. This I will explain later why I am providing B. What is this? Okay. So this is pipelining actually, but we are not focusing upon this in this session. Okay. To make this, make the things simple, I am not uh, coming to this point. So in the data phase, I can see, in the data phase, I can see. Uh, this in the data phase, I am getting the data. So in the data phase, I am getting the data from the slave using the HR data bus. Okay. So we are only consider we are only concerned about this single. So in the case of data phase, we can see we are getting the data. And what about this B? What is this B? So we are not going to discuss it now. Okay. We we will uh, keep the things simple. This is actually pipelining that we will discuss later in our sessions. Okay. Yes. So this is how we are going to read the data. Okay. Once again, I am concluding this particular read transfer. So in the case of read transfer, we are going to have two phases. Okay. We are going to have two phases. One is address phase. In the case of address phase, the master, it is going to provide the address corresponding to the data item, which it wants to read. Okay. And in the case of data phase, we are going to get the data. In the case of address phase, the master should provide a valid control signal. Okay. And this everything is happening during HRD is equal to 1. In, in our entire discussion, HRD is equal to 1. In our entire discussion, HRD is equal to 1. You can see here, HRD is equal to 1. Okay. So that is slave is ready for the transfer. Okay. So this is how we are going to perform a read transfer. Now, let us talk about write transfer. So what do you mean by write transfer? That is the data is transferred from, the data is being transferred from master to slave. Again, 
So we have two phases for the write transfer also. What is the first phase which we have address space? How many cycles it will last? It will last for only one cycle. Okay. It is not compulsory. It might be extended also. It might uh, this address space will can be of two cycles or this address space can be of three cycles also. How it is being decided that we will discuss later. Okay. It will depend actually upon the HRD signal. Okay. So that that case we will discuss later. But in our case, our we are maintaining H ready is equal to one constantly. Okay. H ready is not becoming zero. H ready is equal to one whole time. Okay. So that's why address space is only for one cycle. Okay. Now in the case of address space, the master is providing a valid uh, valid control signal that is H right is equal to one, and we are also providing the address which is associated with the data which we are going to send in the next phase. Okay, the data we are going to send in the next phase. So for that data, we are linking an address. Okay. Now in the case of data phase, if you observe, we are providing the data. So using the HW data bus, we are providing the data corresponding to this address. So this is how we are basically sending the data or basically we are performing a write transfer. And what about this B? This we will discuss. Okay, this will come on the pipelining concept that we are going to discuss in our further sessions. So this is how we are going to perform a write transfer or read transfer. So in simple transfer with no wait states. So whenever your H ready is equal to one here in these two cases, which we have discussed now, in this H ready is equal to one, that is there is no wait state. Okay, if H ready is equal to zero, then wait states will be included. If H ready is equal to zero, then there will be inclusion of wait states. And if H ready is equal to one, there are no wait states. What do you mean by wait states? This and all we are going to see in our upcoming scenarios, or this and all we are going to discuss further sessions. Okay. So the manager drives the uh, so in a simple transfer with no wait states that means H ready is equal to one. That means H ready is equal to one. So the manager drives the address and control signals onto the bus after the rising edge of H clock. So the subordinate or the slave then samples the address and control information on the next rising edge of H clock. Okay. So after the subordinate has sampled the address and controls, it can start to drive the appropriate H ready out signal response. So this response is sampled by the manager on the third rising edge of clock. So for example, if the manager is driving, uh, is driving, is providing a address signal at the first clock edge, then this will be sampled by the subordinate in the second clock edge. This will be sampled by the subordinate or the slave in the second clock edge, and it will provide uh, by sampling this uh, address and control signals in the second clock edge, it is going to provide the H ready signal that is uh, being sampled by the master in the third cycle. Okay, so this is how we are going to perform a transfer. So in the first cycle, the master it is going to send the valid control signals and address signals, and uh, in the second cycle, the the slave it is going to sample them, and in the second cycle, after sampling them. It is going to provide the H ready out signal, appropriate H ready signal according to the. So it is going to provide a appropriate H ready signals, and that H ready signal will be sampled by the master in the third cycle. Yes. So that's about your write transfer and read transfer without any wait states. So in our next session, we are going to discuss about a write transfer and read transfer with wait states. Yes. So that's all about this video. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and please provide your valuable feedback so that it improves to, it helps, to, so it helps me to improve my content quality. Yes. Thank you for watching this video.